Hello and welcome to my channel. My name is Lynn and today my video is part of the Oso oh inspired collaboration hop that is put on by Call Me Crafty Al. And today our inspiration piece is from Leslie Miller, Running With Scissors. And uh, those of us who are participating in this collaboration have been uh, sort of tasked with just creating anything that we want, but something that has been inspired by this original piece. And I really enjoy participating in this collaboration every month because it's so fun to see how the same piece of art has inspired uh, everybody else. And when I look at the inspiration piece that's sent out to us, there is always something that strikes me and, you know, makes me want to craft or makes me want to try something. And for this piece, there was actually two things that stood out at, uh, to me. And the first is the, I just really love the layout. Uh, I love that it's a little bit more um, heavy on the left side and on the right side it's it's fairly blank except for the sentiment. So I really love that. The other thing that I really enjoyed is all of the layers, all of the textures, all of the um, different things that are going on on that left side, I saw that there's some um, stamping that's directly onto the card panel, and then there there's some that's kind of lifted and given a little bit of dimension. And then I love that sort of velvet ribbon and that bit of lace. So that was the other thing that sort of um, stood out to me. I wish I had some uh, some of that gorgeous ribbon and some lace, uh, but I don't. So I'm going to use what I have, and primarily I'm going to try to uh, sort of stick to that card layout. Now, what I have here is this is rice paper that, you know, what's funny is... I did some gel printing on a live stream, and as I was going, I was cleaning off my brayer onto spare sheets of rice paper or um, copy paper. This is one of those sort of what you may consider um, waste. But I looked, I was going through cleaning up, and Often, you'll find this to be the case if you do gel printing, some of those waste sheets are really nice. And I think part of it is that you just don't even think about it. So you don't, you can't overthink what you're doing. You're just trying to clean off your brayer and then accidentally, you know, something beautiful happens. So all I did was just tear a, a strip of that. And that's going to be my first layer onto my card. Now to find out how everybody else was inspired by this piece, just click on the hashtag OSICAPR2023. And that should bring up a list of all of the other uh, collaborators who are sharing how this original piece from Leslie Miller inspired them to create. If for some reason that hashtag is not working for you, Call Me Crafty Al will have a playlist on her channel and you can just uh, put that playlist on play and it'll just show one video after the next. So that might be another convenient way to see everybody's um, inspired work. So I am going to, this rice paper is really, really thin. I did use some Mod Podge uh, underneath it and above it, but you could probably use a glue stick and that might be less messy. But I was hoping that by um, putting some Mod Podge on the top that I could also use that to as the adhesive to glue down my ribbon as well. But if you were to use a glue stick, I would apply the glue to your card panel because that rice paper it's fairly thin. It is strong, uh, probably stronger than tissue paper, but it is thin like tissue paper. So um, so you might have to be a little bit careful with tearing. 
And as I burnished, I did get a little bit of uh, lifting or tearing as well. So uh, I don't mind that so much because the whole idea behind all of the elements that I have today is um, to have a lot of these pieces be very dynamic in color. So I intentionally didn't want to use solid color cardstocks and... Um, you know, solid inks because I like that sort of um, kind of the speckled look, the marbled look, and it just makes it look a little bit abstract. And and so with the daisies, I'm going to do some really, really simple shaping. So I've got my ball stylus and my shaping mat here. And I start from the back just to curl those petals. And Whichever layer I've designated to be my bottom layer, I don't quite as aggressively curl those petals. That way that layer, the bottom layer, it sits a little bit more flat. And then the die cut layer that I put on top, I can curl that a little bit more and it'll sit nicely on top of that bottom layer. Now part of this die set, which is from Spellbinders, it's actually um, from Susan Tierney Cockburn, who designs amazing 3D floral dies. The there are um a lot of other dies to cut out these leaves. You have some dies that will cut out the center of the daisy and as well there's two different size petals. I thought that I was going to collage up um several and maybe have some of those petals lay completely flat in the way that Leslie's card had flat stamping right on the card panel itself as well as some that were lifted up and a little bit more dimensional but I decided against that because the first easy is so large that I feel like um it's enough and so I I just stuck with the one flower now this is a bit of testing that I'm doing I don't have an ink color that is close to the ribbon and I wanted to bring that dark dark teal somewhere else onto the card and so what I decided was I found the closest color that I could it's a little bit more bluish than um than teal so what I did was I brought in a a light green ink and I'm just going to do multiple stampings. And so you can do this to mix your colors a little bit and layer one color on top of another. Because with dye inks and hybrid inks as well, they are transparent. And so they will kind of, as the ink settles into the card stock, blend a little bit. In my, on my test strip, that I stamped out originally, I was able to get a little bit of an ombre from a little bit more greenish teal at the top and a little bit more bluish teal at the bottom. I tried to go for that intentionally uh, when I went to go do it onto my card base here, but I didn't quite get that same ombre, but I still got some color variation, which I really, really love because there, besides that strip of satin ribbon, there isn't a flat bit of color anywhere on this card. And that was one of the things I was trying to go for, which was to um, almost create something that looks a little bit more uh, what you might think of as mixed media um, and just abstract and uh, dynamic. And so that uh, is pretty cool uh, in terms of the stamping effect because I've never done that before and I love how that turned out and now that I've seen it and done it once I am definitely going to be doing it more so it's one of those things where necessity sort of breeds <laughs> um, innovation and creativity I'm sure somebody else has done it I'm not claiming to have um you know, be the first to have thought to do that. But it's just one of those things where you have a need and you just noodle on it a little bit and maybe you discover something new and fun. So here's a look at my final card. And if the original piece from Leslie Miller has inspired you to create something, I hope you'll play along and share your makes with us by 
um, including the hashtag I was oh so inspired. And that way we all can see how this piece inspired you as well. Thank you so much for joining me today. Don't forget to uh, click on that hashtag OSICAPR2023 to see everybody else's inspired work. And uh, we would all love if you liked our video, left a comment, and if you like what you see, subscribe to our channel. Thanks again. Until next time, happy crafting and have a fantastic day. Bye.